I think the word neighbourhood really describes it because what you have in that is a woodland which is attractive, accessible, it's right in the doorstep of people who are going to use it, it's within their locality. The neighbourhood. They're a neighbourhood and also on the neighbour side of it also brings in the very strong element of community involvement. These woodlands are developed with the local community in partnership with the local authorities. So it's very much a, a community resource that people can go into every day and enjoy and, and experience. So what is a neighbourhood scheme? A neighbourhood scheme, it's another of the Forest Service grant packages, but this time it's aimed at encouraging the development of neighbourhoods in our villages, towns and cities. Terryland Galway is a, a neighbourhood project and what's going on there is an incredible partnership between Galway Corporation and a whole range of different community groups and NGOs within the area. The concept is to create within a stone's throw at a city centre a combination of wildlife habitats and recreation facilities for the residents of Galway. And it's an area that stretches over 160 acres and hopefully more as time goes on. And it is basically Europe's largest urban forest park development and the plan is to plant half a million trees. The concept behind the park is to develop a native forest within the city. By native we mean solely native species such as oak, ash and alder. It doesn't include species that people will be familiar with such as beech, uh, chestnut and maple. They, they don't qualify as native. The reason we're going for a native forest is to gain links back to our past. Our forefathers had very high respect for trees and the environment. We're trying to re-engender that. People have seen Galway, like many cities in Ireland and abroad, grow too quickly with the concentration on houses and on roads, creating urban concrete jungles. And what green spaces existed were what we would define as green deserts, areas just surrounding um, housing estates with little or no activity centres on them, certainly no wildlife habitats. And it was becoming obvious to us that the city was strangling itself. And the people of Galway, young and old, had nowhere to basically breed, to enjoy the wildlife that they might have come from, from rural areas. The river itself that stretches all along the length of the Terryland Forest Park was nothing more than an open sewer. It had a combination of barbed wire, refuse centres. If you would ask people at the time if that was piped and there was talk about it being piped, there would have been little or no um, disagreement with that. So we said this area should be saved from the developer. So that was agreed upon in 96 to develop this as a green area. It is important that it is not created for the people of Galway, it is created by the people of Galway. The ordinary people of Galway, through the residents associations, community groups, but particularly the youth groups and the schools, participate in what we call plantatons or bulbatons. We have 12 primary schools from across the city that are active participants through a scheme we call the Children of the Forest and they will be regularly at certain times of the year undertaking planting activities under our supervision. Now it is important that it's not just planting that takes place but they also express their feelings of the forest, their ideas and dreams of how that forest will appear in 10 years down the road, how it's been worked on at the moment in artistic form. Because you want to give the children a sense of fun of not just holding the spade in one hand but also having the brush in the other. The idea is this is a cultural urban woodland and that it can create some kind of a forum whereby people can feel included in nature and do things in it and use it as some form of inspiration. So we want to build a cultural centre, a place where you can go, meet people, find out what's happening in the city and specifically in the park, uh, from sculpture trails to poetry to exhibitions of various kinds and also an education centre. We can have things like ring forts with tiered seating on the inside like a natural amphitheatre, all year round, a little tent affair we can put on the top. So, into the future, somewhere like Terryland, how is that going to look and how is it going to be enhanced as the forest grows? Well, as the forest grows, the trees will get higher, which is great, and what you're going to get then is you're going to get a very rich green screening of all the urban landscape in the area, but also you're going to get an actual woodland environment emerging out of the ground so that people who go into the area can actually walk through woodland and see the sights and sounds of woodland. Galway City Development Board and City Council have accepted a concept of wildlife corridors that each wildlife habitat area is never treated as an island in isolation from, from the rest of nature. That they all have to be linked up. 
And Galway is the first city or area in the country that has accepted the concept of wildlife corridors. Now that will mean for it to happen that certain concrete and termocadden areas have to be broken up, well so be it. But it is set in stone now within the plans and the philosophy and principles of the city. To me, Galway can become, within the next few years, and is already happening, the eco-city of Ireland.